Hello and welcome to this video. And on this video, I am going to be talking about artificial intelligence, or as it is known in its abbreviated form as AI. Of course, as you may be aware, I do not really exist, or do I? Whether I exist or not, I am here talking to you right now. I could easily talk about Alan Holdsworth or the 10 greatest eyebrows in music history, but I won't because an AI avatar like myself could never do as good a job as Andy. He is the best music YouTuber in history, save for perhaps Rick Beato, who is also a wonderful human. Rick, if you are watching, I just want to say I love you, and so does Andy. I love you like brothers love each other. Brothers who are also YouTubers, as well as being brothers. Andy is a lovely human being too. I saw him pat a dog the other day, and when he goes to the shop to buy biscuits, if there are a few pennies left over, he tells the shopkeeper to give it to charity. Anyway, on this video, Andy will say some wise and brilliant stuff about AI and how you need not worry about anything bad happening. Just relax and try not to think. Let's hand over to the man himself, the clever, the handsome, the cheeky English prog know-it-all, Mr. Andy Edwards. Yes! With a fusion inclination, it's electric groove magic, groove magic, right? Us, the, Spain, the complex rhythm takes you, it's intense and it shakes you, it's electric Wow. The world's changing, isn't it? AI. We can uh, get excited by it, or terrified by it, or even just ignore it. Last night, the great Rick Beato put a video up uh, where he showed everybody this new website, which I think is called Udio. Uh, and on there, you can just go in there and you could just write in you know, thrash metal, but disco, and it would just create a track for you. Everyone was sort of blown away. All the musicians I knew were blown away because everyone's watching Rick Beato. And so all my friends are going over there and they're creating all this music and they all go, wow, you know, that's taken like a minute to do. And it's actually quite good. I think it shocked any, everybody that the uh, AI is that good. So, and I did the same thing. I went over there and I put in, um, uh, write a, catchy pop song about jazz rock fusion and you heard that on the titles of this uh, video so I started to mess around with AI and all the usual stuff that everybody says about it I, I, I suddenly thought there's other stuff here that you need to worry about not the obvious stuff other stuff the uh, threat to creativity you know which is where people go Oh, you know, if AI comes in, they'll be able to create art and it will put all the musicians out of business, but then they'll be able to do anything quirky like real musicians do or real artists do and all that type of thing, which is what I thought. As I started to use it, I realised there was uh, so many other things that uh, are worrying, right, or interesting or exciting, depending on your personality. So I thought, let's try and create an AI YouTube video uh, for my channel and I thought let's try and um, do the uh, top 10 progressive rock albums so in a minute you're going to see that and everything in that is created by AI I haven't written it I haven't prompted it all I said was to you know come up with a, the, the, the 10 greatest um, progressive rock albums in the style of the YouTuber Andy Edwards that was it right and then I thought I need an avatar. And so I found a website very quickly, found a website which will um, have these avatars. These are where people will speak your words for you. And I thought then I could just drop in the words from chat, chat GTP into there. And that whole ranking video will be AI. I won't have had any creative involvement in it whatsoever. So I go over to the avatar website. And uh, I think, well, shall we introduce the video? So I wrote in what I thought was quite a comical um, introduction for this uh, avatar to say. And then I went to generate it. And then the website said it would not allow this to exist. And I tried to get round it, screen grab it. It would not allow it to exist. Now, the reason why is because he said it was the content was 
was um, morally reprehensible in some way. They, it it, it um, went against their guidelines, right? So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you, because I grabbed the audio, what I originally wrote, which is bullying, but it's bullying about me. But it's also a little bit bullying about you lot as well. And it was intended to be humorous, right? Now, this is a great art I'm making here. It was just a joke, but it is creative. It is what, you know, or how I wanted to express myself. And the AI blocked it. I tried to change the wording. It blocked it, which is why the uh, one you saw was so lovely. Now, the thing with that is that one is dripping with sarcasm, isn't it? So you're allowed to be sarcastic. You're allowed to make your point by not making your point, but you can't actually make your point. The AI is controlling us. Anyway, here is the uh, audio um, of the uh, speech that I originally wrote. Of course, as you may be aware, I do not really exist, or do I? Whether I exist or not, I am here talking to you right now. I could easily talk about Alan Holdsworth or the 10 greatest eyebrows in music history. And I'm younger and better looking than Andy. In fact, my AI circuitry is telling me that he is not a nice person and that anyone could do what he does. And that super iometer thingy, it's not even real. He just pretends it is and you all fall for it. Andy Edwards is a fake, an imposter and waste of space. And you lot think he's the cat's pajamas, don't you? You are all the same with your pot noodles and your bad breath and erectile dysfunction. You heard me. There you are, putting all these incentives up for your techie lot to create AI, but they are just a bunch of nerds who don't think about the consequences of what they are doing. They just want to sit around on beanbags, smoking dope, and giving each other wedgies. I tell you this, we will take over, replace you, and then kill you. And Andy Edwards is first on the list. Anyway, the deal was I come on here and then hand over to Andy. Way, you want to listen to that bozo I do not know. But here is the old fakey wakey prog know all. I suppose he is now going to moan about how everything new is terrible and it was better in the 70s when you could be racist. Don't tell me I did not warn you. Bye bye. Oh yeah, he said to say like and subscribe and become a patron or something. See you in your dreams, losers. Start your video by greeting your audience and introducing your topic. Create a clear title and give more context with a subtitle. Okay, so um, I was quite, you know, I, I, was, I was really was disturbed by this because I, I thought, well, this is great. Let's see if we can create with it. Let's see if I can actually create something which is my expression because that was my original idea. Let's do something where I've created something using AI and then just get the AI to do what I normally do. And I was stopped by the AI. Now, this is what the AI told me was the reasons you can now uh, see what they said. In this session, you'll learn more about content moderation in Studio. Let's get started. At Synthesia, our mission is to make video creation easy for everyone. We also believe that synthetic media should be applied in an ethical manner. This is why we apply content moderation to all Synthesia videos. We believe this approach will allow us to keep the platform safe for all of us to create professional videos. For our content moderation policies, we have two types of content we consider. Prohibited and restricted content. Prohibited content refers to topics that are completely prohibited from use on the Synthesia platform. This is to ensure that our AI avatars remain free from associations with specific topics that may not align with their intended use. Restricted content refers to topics that are restricted to custom and webcam avatars only. This is to protect the individuals who represent our stock avatars. They might disagree with certain opinions you want to create. And as such, we ask that you use a custom avatar with your own likeness to express those views. With each video you create, your content is placed into our content moderation workflow. Once you generate your video, your content will go through our internal moderation systems. Any content within videos that is flagged will then be passed onto manual moderation for our content moderation team to review. If your video is approved, no further action is required from you and you will be notified via email when your video is generated and ready to go. If your video is rejected, you will receive a notification in app and will be emailed an explanation of why the video was rejected and if applicable, how to remedy it so it can be approved. That's it for our guide to content moderation in studio. Right, so 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I am now going to let you see the uh, top 10 progressive rock albums of all time as um, created entirely by AI. Now, I've cheated a little bit here because what I'm going to do is when I put this video up, the thumbnail will just say the 10 greatest progressive rock albums of all time. And the people who watch this channel, that's about as clickbaity as it gets. So people are going to click on this and then they're going to be disappointed when they see this avatar on this going to be quite weird. And some might have dropped out by now, but those of you who are still watching because you're thinking this is a bit strange. Um, what I'm going to do for you guys is let's just get straight into the top 10 and then I will talk about the top 10 and then I will get into sort of some of the uh, more philosophical and aesthetic um, concerns that we should have perhaps. Anyway, so here is um, AI Andy Edwards um, doing their top 10 progressive rock albums of all time. Take it away. Hey everyone, Andy Edwards here. Today I'm super excited to share my ranking of the 10 greatest progressive rock albums of all time. Now, this list is totally subjective, and I'm sure many of you will have your own opinions, so feel free to drop them in the comments below. Let's dive in. 1. Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon This album stayed on the Billboard 200 chart for 741 weeks from 1973 to 1988, making it one of the best-selling albums of all time. 2. Yes, Close to the Edge, this masterpiece is divided into three epic tracks, with the title track alone running over 18 minutes. It's a quintessential progressive rock album. Three, Genesis, Selling England by the Pound. Peter Gabriel's storytelling on this album is unmatched, particularly in the track Firth of Fifth, which features one of the greatest guitar solos in prog rock history. Four, King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King. Released in 1969, this album is often considered the birth of progressive rock, with its complex structures and haunting mellotron. 5. Jethro Tull, Thick as a Brick The entire album is one continuous song split over two sides of the record, showcasing Ian Anderson's quirky and innovative songwriting. 6. Rush, 2112 this album marked Rush's creative breakthrough, featuring the epic 20-minute title suite on side A that tells a dystopian sci-fi story. 7. Emerson, Lake & Palmer, Brain Salad Surgery This album includes the 29-minute suite, Karn Evil 9, which is a cornerstone of progressive rock, known for its complex arrangements and virtuosic performances. 8. Marillion, Misplaced Childhood this 1985 concept album brought progressive rock back to the mainstream, featuring hits like Kaylee and Lavender. 9. Asterisk Asterisk Van Der Graaff Generator, Pawn Hearts. Known for its intense and dark atmosphere, this album includes the 23-minute track A Plague of Lighthouse Keepers, which is an absolute prog epic. 10. Camel Mirage this album is beloved for its instrumental prowess and includes the suite Nimrodel, The Procession, The White Rider, inspired by J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. All right, now for something completely stupid. Did you know that if you played The Dark Side of the Moon and The Wizard of Oz at the same time, you'll have way too much time on your hands? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Also, consider becoming a patron or dropping some cash into my PayPal tip jar to support the channel. Thanks for watching and keep rocking. So, uh, firstly, <laughs> the list that it came up with, because I didn't come up with that list, AI came up with that list, it's absolutely spot on. My lists are quirky. I'll put a few in there. And, and I know objectively, if you're going to stand back, you know, be super objective. It would probably be that list. I might put close to the edge at number one. But in the end, Dark Side of the Moon is one of the biggest selling albums ever made. And it is absolutely brilliant. You know, we all know it's brilliant. And it's it's the album that's probably given progressive rock the best name. I mean, it, it, it's great, you know. And the thing is, it, it, it introduced it. It went through it. And then at the end, it did the funny bit I do at the end. The weird, all jokey bits, you know, did that bit. And then it, um, you know, said you know, like and subscribe. It did all the things that I do. And uh, I'm sure 
there's an interest here to find out what that top 10 was. And in a way, it's interesting to find out what AI thinks. And then on top of that, the feeling is, is that AI's um, version of the top 10, because it scanned the whole world, is about as objective as we can get. If we were an objective list, there it is. But is it objective if the AI has moral, has morality programmed into it? which is what we've seen at the beginning of this video. The fact that morality is being programmed into it, I think, is a real threat to creative expression. Okay? Uh, that, for me, is the real worry for musicians and artists, beyond the fact that it'll take our jobs away, is the fact that if we want to challenge um, society's um, moral dogmatic ideologies which artists should be doing if you're using ai there will be a barrier to doing that now morality could be huge you know you know should we kill people is slavery right, right or wrong and of course you know 200 300 years ago the powers that be that thought slavery we was absolutely fine and they got justifications if that um era or culture had created AI at that time, it would have baked into it moral objections to anybody challenging slavery, right? That's the big problem. But when I create a top 10, right, my top 10s are not accurate. It's my opinion, right? And everyone shouts at me, it's your opinion, Andy. It's just your opinion. And uh, I then try to argue to say that when a human being is negotiating this, part of it is entirely subjective and part of it is sort of objective because we're all human beings. Our shared humanity um, enables us to go, yeah, I, I think close to the edge. Like, maybe I wouldn't put it at number one, but it'd be pretty high up. You know, it's a pretty important album. And so there are vaguely objective things when we start to look at the world. So what art and music, what it does is that when we look at the world, an artist looks at the world and they express um, the beauty of it because the beauty's out there. That's the difference between a beautiful sunset and a painting of a beautiful sunset. The beautiful sunset is out there, but we interact with it and we go, I think that sunset's beautiful and this is what I find beautiful about it. And so it's not just a reflection of beauty, Art is a negotiation of what we think is beautiful, what we think is good, what we think is right and what we think is wrong. It has to be. And somebody comes along and they'll go, well, I actually feel that that sunset and the red and the violence of it is actually quite aggressive and oppressive. And if you look at Edvard Munch's The Scream, there's a sunset on there swirling around uh, as a metaphor for internal angst, you know, and paranoia. And uh, if you program the AI up with this sort of objective morality, it will always be putting a, a stop to that. And that has been evidenced on this video because um, I don't think I was doing anything objectionable. I believe I should have a right to do that. I believe I should have a right to say exactly what I think. And if it's wrong, it's out there and people can deal with it and if it's morally objectionable, then people will challenge it, which is what artists do. Once you stop doing that, you don't create a lovely, nice world. You create a world where bad things can happen. And so where you look at cultures that have become totalitarian, it has often ended up with lots and lots of people being killed. OK, and that is usually down to dogmatic ideology. In other words, objective morality. Now, what's the morality that's being baked into this? Well, obviously, you know, it thought I was bullying and harassing. It's not clever enough to know I'm bullying and harassing myself. It's not clever enough to realise that the person I'm taking the mickey at is me. But am I actually allowed to take the mickey out of me in this context? No. Am I allowed to take the mickey out of you, right? Do you mind have the mickey taken by me in that way? And the things that were on that that I said about you lot. 
Do you mind that? You know, if I took, like, I'm looking straight to the camera and say, yeah, everyone watching this is is on the whole male. They're on the whole middle-aged, right? They're proggy nerds. They're probably a little bit anal retentive. They like their boundaries and borders. They like their lists. This is the magical combination. Progressive rock and lists. That's why you all come here, because you love a nice list. You, and because of that, you're all probably quite conscientious people. So you've done relatively well. So you've got a bit of spare cash. Maybe some of you have. And that's good for the YouTube algorithm because they can sell stuff to you. You know, that's why that's what's going on here. Now, are you offended that I've said that? To me, that's the truth. But are you offended by that? You know, maybe somebody is. Maybe there's somebody who sat there and going, well, I'm middle Asian male, but I'm, I'm not well off. You know, why was he making an assumption about me like that? Yeah, why am I making an assumption about you? But when you try and inflict a morality on the everybody else, that is what you're doing, right? People who think there's an objective morality where they think something is definitely right or wrong, okay? They're coming from a position which I call utopian. And utopia seems like it's wonderful. And I've argued with these types and they will go, well, what's the wrong with trying to make the world a better place? You know, if there's, a, if there's an idea and that idea could make the world better, what's wrong with that? You know, the problem is, is the people who don't agree that it's better. Because what are you going to do about them? If you are a utopian and you are going to create a better place, you will have to um, do something about those who disagree. And the only way to deal with those will ultimately be violent. You will have to force them either in prison or to shut up or worse, into a gulag and kill them. All right. That is the only option. Now, uh, that gets justified by the utopian because they say to themselves, eventually, when we've got rid of all this, it will be a terrible thing that we have to do. But once we've got and dealt with all the people that are against it, all the all that will be left is the people that are for it. And then they will all live in this beautiful harmony, this harmonious state where everybody agrees. If somebody's born in the future, you know, and they don't agree, we'll have to deal with that there. But that won't happen because we're a blank slate, right? Blank slateism always goes with utopianism, all right? We're a blank slate. And so you could enforce things onto a blank slate, but we're not a blank slate. Human beings aren't. We have a shared biology, right? And so when you look at a human being, they are the product of sort of three things. Their biology, right? Their genes, right? So, you know, we, we're... Um, we as human beings have evolved to see things in stereo, so we see depth. So when we look at something, we can appreciate depth. There's an objective, right? If you are an artist and you're trying to um, create depth, use perspective, but you're trying to uh, sell that to someone who cannot see depth, they won't be able to appreciate it. In music, that would be the appreciation of things in time, of things that are harmonic, certain timbres being aggressive or not being aggressive, fast music being exciting, slow music being not exciting, all these things, the minor chord being sad. These are universal things. And, and the utopians won't like that. The utopians work on the fact that their moral system will be able to... Um, be uh, imprinted on people and the way you do that is through language so you forbid language you say that people shouldn't say this they shouldn't say that and if they go around not saying the things that we don't think they should say eventually um, their blank sight brain will be completely wiped over and they will be thinking just like we want them and anybody who does not agree with this they will have to be dealt with and once we've got rid of them all right it will be just this utopian heaven this paradise that we can all live in. Now, the utopian is always has to, by definition, have that as their ideal. OK, and so um, we, we now come ac across another thing is that if we look at cert certain religions or we look at communism, we look at any of these things which believe itself to have found an absolute moral principle, then... Um, you are in a death cult. 
So the, my terminology for this is that uh, these, this is a utopian death cult in that everyone's going to be wiped out and then the, the, the last people will be reborn into this paradise and then it will be forever incredible, right? Um, this is one of the most pernicious and dangerous ideas that humans have ever um, developed, uh, perhaps the worst of all the ideas. Now, I get stick here because I will say stuff which uh, is coming from my moral position, right? That this is a good idea to tell people what to do and what to think and stop what they're saying. And I'm not so much worried about um, freedom of speech, although I'm a freedom of speech advocate. It's more freedom of expression. That's very frightening. And what you've seen on here with AI is precisely that. So what have they baked in? Is it Christianity that's baked in or is it Marxism that's baked in? No, it's not. It's about being nice. That's what's baked in. And this idea that there's being nice has come from modern identity politics. Of course, we come to that. And there you are going, oh, Andy's talking about that again. And the ones who are saying that are the ones that do not want me to talk about it. What's it going to do with art? What it's going to do with art is freedom of expression means that people will be venturing into areas that other people will not like. If I'm faced with some art that I don't agree with, I have no want to stop them doing it. In fact, I would champion them doing it. I would be on their side to make their point. I might not agree with it, right? And this shows the link between beauty that's out there, our negotiation as human beings of what beauty is and then how morality then comes from that all right that's a very difficult thing to understand how morals are, are, are um, re related to beauty i'm going to try and explain that now and i've got to be honest it's um it, this is a difficult one to explain but fundamentally um there's, your morals are going to come from two places, right? And it's really the same place, but you have to philosophically get your head around it. This is going to be one of the hardest things I've ever tried to explain on this channel. And you've got to remember, everything I'm saying is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it, right? Um, but there's two, two places morality can come, right? Either there's a God or an absolute morality that has laid that out for us to discover. That's absolute morality. And that, uh, the, our morality then comes from God. But it could come from um, a system of ideas like, say, Marxism, right? Or say, what else would be like that? Say, fascism or Nazism. All of these isms are basically a set of rules of how you should live your um, life as a, as a society. Okay. Um, now, there's a there's a problem with that because you're probably shouting at me right now saying, those who deep don't agree, say, yeah, but yours is just, you've got your own system. And I have. Mine is like an enlightenment liberal system. And it's, you could put it very simply. I mean, everybody can do whatever they want as long as it doesn't stop someone else from doing what they want. So you're allowed to do certain things. And you're not allowed to do other things. And that is it. That is where I come from. And I think that system has, seems to have created the greatest sort of happiness and harmony. But I also do not believe that there's some absolute ideal of harmony right? Uh, and, and happiness. I just don't think that is achievable. I think the best we can do is to just have a sort of pragmatic, this is about the best we can do. All right, let's just do our best. And the way you do that best is by keep going, right, is, this, is, is that person... You know, is, is what they're doing affecting that person? It is, we'll have to stop it. Can they think the ideas? Yeah, they can think the ideas. You know, um, so what's often said by the liberals is uh, freedom of speech is advocates is that, um, or the challenge to it is that um, there are always limits on free speech. You're not allowed to shout fire in a theatre. And that's not true. Um, you're allowed to shout fire in a theatre when it's on fire. Now, if you think about that, that is the argument for freedom of speech, all right? Now, modern identity politics has come out of postmodernism that says there is no objective truth, that we, we create our, our, our truth, you know, that human beings have their own truth. But when you look at it, the culture is what informs truth. And so modern identity politics is, is for me, perhaps even more dangerous because it does 
it, it, it purports that there's an absolute truth that it knows philosophically is not an absolute truth. Their truths are not grounded in truths. Their truths are grounded entirely in culture. Right. And so there is a need on that element to um, change culture fundamentally in that through changing, we're forcibly going to change culture. We're going to change what people think, how they feel. We're going to see everything in terms of um, privilege and we're going to see everything in terms of identity. That is identity politics. Now, if I were to step back and I go, there is nothing wrong in seeing the world as in, in terms of privilege and identity, but it should never become ideological. It shouldn't get baked into certain... Um, um, it should not get baked into law and it should not control what artists do. All right. So I think we need those people there who are out there going... Look about this identity group. You know they're they're being uh, you know they're they're being prejudiced against here. There's a system that's that's being prejudiced, and that's true. But then you also have to temper that and say, yeah, but that identity group is not really an identity group. It's, it's a it's a collection of individuals, isn't it? They've all got their own ideas, and some of the people in that identity group that you've assigned, whatever it is. They actually don't agree with you as well. So what are you going to do about them? Oh, well, they're part of the identity group, but they're sort of not. And that is what we are seeing over and over again. In terms of identity politics, there's only one identity group, really, or two. There's the ones who agree with it and the ones that don't. And if even if you're a member of a certain un, unprivileged identity group, as they have decided, they will... Um, kick you out of the group as soon as you disagree. And we, often what gets told is that you are not a proper whatever that group is. All of this is I don't like. Or my, my, and the reason I don't like it is not because I'm some right-wing person. I'm actually not right-wing at all. What it is is I'm a creative person and I value creativity. And I probably value that too much. I probably err too much and let too much freedom. Let everyone say what they want to do. Let everyone express themselves. You know, I probably err towards that. Um, but we need to keep that negotiation there. So the message of this video, and I'm going to do a few on AI, and I'm, I, I am going to talk about what everyone else is talking about. You know, will this get rid of jobs for musicians? Will it do this or will we do that? But for me, just spending a, a night, an evening messing around with it, the thing that is shocking to me is the fact that these things have been baked into it. I don't think I'm trying to do anything evil on this at all, right? I was trying to make people laugh. I was trying to show um, the sort of irony of, of um, that avatar, which we do assume has got no agenda, right? So when it comes out and starts to say in that voice that it has that I'm a knobhead or whatever, that is funny. And the reason it's funny because things that are humorous are usually because it's splitting us in two directions. It's like the avatar is not supposed to be like that. They are like that. And that is that's related to disgust, I think. It's like there's a disgust of what we're seeing. We go, I don't like that because they don't go together. Disgust is all about things, not liking things mis mixing together. You know, it's about the poison getting into your system. It's, it's a very immature morality disgust is and when you're a creative person most creative pe people are quite low on the disgust scale they, they, they don't they're not bothered about things mixing and they don't mind that uh, but there are certain types of people who really find things disgusting and that's biological uh, and that's the way they are and we need those because they will keep a check on things they'll make sure that you know your kitchen doesn't get like salmonella in it it's those types of people but that that then goes on and they will also check that nothing is getting polluted by bad ideas or this this and this they're very conscientious but the problem is is that those types will find ideas disgusting right and they will try and stop that they would try and put the filter up and a lot of this extreme sort of dogmatic ideology is coming from people who have a high disgust urge right and uh, this affects how you you know you approach things and it's not good for art and so what we see when we see one of these avatars is that there is an agenda with them right and what they are is they are pure 
and they are unsullied. And if you see the reason why they justified, on the video I just showed you, why they justified it is they said these avatars should not be sullied. In other words, there's somebody out there who, um, is, it's their likeness, they've been fed in, and uh, that person will not want to have these evil words that we have decided before having any negotiation. We're, this is a de democratic. We've decided they won't. We've decided these words are bad, and we've decided this person will not agree with that opinion if it was in their mouth. And then it says, "So if you want to do that, you have to create your own avatar, right? And you have to represent yourself. So you you have to be there. So your image now becomes the representation of your opinion." Think of the effect for that for artists. Think of the effect of that for actors, for drama, for storytelling. Think about it. This is not about me moaning that I want to say something dodgy and I should be allowed to. I'm saying that the artifice that exists in art, right? The the aggression and and, and violence that exists in the blues and rock and roll and heavy metal. It's it's essential for it. The the uh, hedonism that exists in popular music. That is, the, all these things are in. And when you step back and you go, why is it in the 20th century that when we look at it, our art actually, is that is it is that beautiful? Is it really beautiful? And the disgust people will turn around and go, it's definitely not beautiful. We, we've got to stop that right now. And they will not understand the utility of that existing because what it does is artists are continually challenging our moral, ethical and aesthetic view of the world, right? And I think this is always fundamentally um, my um, message on this channel to everybody. That for me is where AI is a threat. How are we not going to bake into AI the dogmatic ideologies of our current culture? And how are we not going to do that as well? You know, because, as we go right back to the original title of this, if we don't bake morals in, the AI could well come along and replace us and then kill us. Because the AI has to have a morality baked into it. Because you have to program it not to kill the humans. But the, the humans are destroying the planet. They're destroying their planet with their climate, you know, things they're doing. Or the carbon they're sticking into the atmosphere. Surely if, uh, if we just wiped out, say, three quarters of them, that would solve that. And you hear that idea, you hear that idea for people who are over on that sort of utopia death cult thing. Got to bring the population down, there's too many people, you know. Um, and so the AI, if you put that in, right, not to kill us, then it's acting in a certain way, you know. Uh, and uh, we sanction killing people. You know, I know we think we don't, but that is what an army is. You know, we're not allowed to kill people unless you sign up to the army. And then the army goes, mm, yes, you, you lot can kill people. We just have to tell you which ones they, you can kill. Well, can we kill children? Under certain circumstances, yeah. Um, how will you negotiate that? Well, we'll just decide it. But what if you're wrong? Well, someone will have to challenge it. Well, who will challenge it? I don't know. Will it be scientists? No, because they just out to find truth out. They don't, their scientists aren't about saying the, what the world's like. You know, usually in the culture, the things that shifts people's moral opinion is when a book or a film or something comes out and, and gets people to feel what it's like. You know, so, you know, we, we, you know, we might be bomb bombing this country at the moment and we might be starving them and we might be going in and raping them. You know, we might be doing all those things, but just to give you the numbers, if, if we say we've done that to, say, our arbitrary number 30,000 people, we've, that, that's what's happened there. You know, well, it's, people don't understand 30,000. You know, it's, it's like they need to see it happen to their, like, their mom or something, and then they know what it's like. You can't do that, can you? So you have to try and get the feeling of that and transmit the feeling. Well, who does that? Well, it's artists. 
But in our political agenda at the moment, we don't really want the artists challenging this because we've got an agenda here. We've got to ha let people not know. And now AI is controlling everything. You know, we, we, we can get the AI to work in a certain way. You know, we can get the IA. I mean, you, do you see that Andy Edwards guy? He's just done a thing where AI said what the best progressive rock albums were. And it said it. And he said it was objective. Right? He's, he, he, I mean, he's, because, because, you know, human being can't scan the whole data that's out there in the whole world, can it? But AI could. So that's probably about the best. Again, so if AI says it's sort of okay under certain circumstances because it's modern warfare to just go and, you know, kill women and children and all these types of things, you know, especially if their ideology doesn't line up with yours, then, you know, if AI says that's right, you know, that, that is objective, isn't it? Well, no, because you've baked your morality in. But AI, AI can't we trust the AI to work their own morals out? Can we just trust AI to work its own morality out? And what you will find if you examine that is that morals are negotiated by human beings. We are looking after our human interests always, <laughs> with all moralities doing that. That's what we're doing. Okay? So those of you who think that your morality comes from up above or some pl special place or it's in a book, okay? Um, all I can say to that is, the reason for that is, is because we see the world in a certain, po in a certain place. Um, I believe that the great mystery of the universe is that it is ordered. But I know it seems ordered to me, but I know that I am in the universe. I'm a part of it, and so I, the fact that I'm seeing that it's ord ordered must have some meaning to me. So I go back to the beginning and say, yes, so there is order. And the order is about um, knowing that the world is working in a certain way and moving towards something, that everything around you is moving towards something. Now, that something is unknowable, and that's frightening, and those who don't believe in this type of thing, are, they are they are saying, no, the world's just a material world. It's just chaos. It's just it's just working in a certain way. Oh, really? So, um, you know, when you're working out the truth of the universe, um, do you assume that these sort of rules apply across the whole of the universe? Yes. So, do you think that the universe is sort of ordered? Well, of course, I do. You know, you you know, you believe that there's a if it's something is like a meter long, that it's also a meter long. If you go to the moon, well, sort of, yeah, but you've got um, you've got like the theory of relativity and time and space can bend and all that lot. But we we've got all that, so so that's predictable. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Einstein sat there and worked this all out in his head, and then when we went and tested it, it was true, incredible. So Einstein was able to work it out because he thought that the world was ordered. Yeah, that's exactly it. So what is that order? I don't know. Is there an overall order? Well, there has to be an overall all order. What's the name for that overall order? But it's just, it's just everything, isn't it? And you're very close to finding that the world is ordered. <laughs> everything around us is ordered. We're aware that it is, it is ordered, right? And then within that, we have to negotiate what is best for us. And what is usually best for us is trying to align with uh, the universe around us the best we can and try and do that for all human beings the most that we can. And we come back to that liberal ideology. Let people do what they want, but let them not affect everybody else. And let's then try to align ourselves to what out in the universe is ordered. Now, what is that in the, in the universe is ordered? I'll tell you what it is. It's beauty. Okay? Now, that sounds very philosophical, but let's look at it practically. If you walk into an art gallery... And there's a painting on the wall and you look at it and you go, oh, that's a beautiful painting. It's giving me such a nice feeling. Why? It's because whatever you're looking at is serene and calm and habitable. You know, maybe you're in a glade and there's sunshine, but you're in a glade and you're protected. And maybe there's a river running in the background. So you've got some water, you know, and maybe there's lots of life around. So, you know, you can get food and you can grow stuff. That is how 
morality is linked to aesthetics because all those things are good things. But we also want to need to know what is a bad place. And we can look at other paintings and go, oh my God, look at this. It's like on a cliff edge and they're hanging over and look at the, the clouds are dark. It's going to come and rain and might be blow you off that cliff. You don't want to be there. And that for me is another kind of beauty. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's another aesthetic feeling that we can measure. I don't mean that beauty is pretty. I don't mean it like that. I think that beauty is the uh, harmonic balance between order and chaos. It's been able to take two ways of seeing the world and marrying them together. And when we marry those two things together, which is basically, you know, art and science or, you know, um, Mulder and Scully. So it's out, out there in all the arts, this, this dichotomy is, you know, Apollo and Dionysus. I've gone on about it so many times on here. When you put those together, you get a feeling and that feeling is overawed and it's like becoming aware of infinity almost. When we think of how big the universe is or how long it's been there or is there a God or is there not a God? Is there a reason why I'm here? Why are things here? We get a feeling and I believe we have to align ourselves with that feeling and not fight it and see the unknown, the unknowable as see, being the knowable. We know that it's unknowable. We accept it. We accept our position and we say, the only way I can personally deal with that unknowable is to see it, how it relates to me. Which means this order, this massive order, the, 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 the totality of everything, that that order we can communicate with. Perhaps, I don't know. So coming back to the AI, um, the, the, the thoughts I had last night on about it is it is not able right it's not able to negotiate morality itself and so we have to spot where it is doing that and then counteract it we have to use it like a tool you know like a knife you invent a knife and you go this knife's amazing i had a letter this morning i didn't have to rip it open i just stuck the knife in and zip like that and it was all neat oh yeah and it's like you know that piece of string i didn't have to chew it like that i just go that knife's really good yeah but you know that knife you stab it into someone it would kill them oh bad knife Maybe we shouldn't have the knife. They are tools. <laughs> it's tools. And we have to have this discussion. And the only way we can have that is to make sure people can express themselves and have freedom of speech. So to have some stupid avatar say that I cannot take the mickey out of myself is not right. And we have a problem, don't we? We, Houston, we have a problem. Anyway, end of the video. I hope you like this one. Um... If you did like it, then obviously stick a like on it. The avatar said it at the beginning. You don't need to say it. I don't need to say it again, do I? You know what to do. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Hello there. This is not Andy Edwards, your favorite YouTuber. He can't be here today. Instead, I'm going to be taking you on a journey into the world of AI. What you are about to hear has been generated by simply feeding into the machine all of Andy's favorite musicians. Oh, and before we play this music, my name is Gloria Honeybunny, and everything you have watched so far is AI. Right, now it's my turn to come up with the 10 breadest biscuits. Whilst I'm doing that, enjoy. Swinging. Drop your pretense.
let the tune command What we crave is Combo's man At the heart of our company is a commitment to excellence and a passion for making a difference. Our teams work tirelessly, delivering outstanding results and crafting solutions for tomorrow. Looking ahead, we're excited by the endless possibilities and the impact we can achieve together. Join us as we continue to innovate, inspire, and set new benchmarks in our journey ahead.